Hello there. Tarzan is one of my favorite Disney animated movies, and despite being part of the era known as the Disney Renaissance, I've always considered it to be somewhat underrated. I appreciate the rather dark tone, and for its time, I think the blend of digital backgrounds and traditional animation looks pretty neat. That said, the movie isn't flawless by any means, and I have a few issues myself, such as this brief scene, which sees Tarzan riding a penny farthing down a tree. Seriously, what the actual? And also the fact that they expect us to believe an elephant scaled this boat. Again, I repeat, what the actual? In fact, even though I kind of like Tantor's character, I never really understood how the elephant fits into all this. I mean, does he also speak gorilla? What happened to his herd? Did they abandon him? Maybe Tantor's backstory is a spin-off movie we'd all like to see, instead of this. This. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Today, we're talking about the game, and where better to start than with level one, aptly titled... Welcome to the jungle! We got fun and games! Yeah! Already sounds like this game's gonna rock! Wow. Rock and roll. As is common practice with Disney games, the first level is extremely easy, and if I'm honest, misleadingly so. Indeed, this game's difficulty is a little inconsistent. Some levels are piss easy, while others will likely see you die a number of times before completing them, especially the last few. But this one, as I said, is easy, particularly if you play it on easy mode. Duh. Or even on the medium difficulty setting, as Turk repeatedly appears to give you pointers. Hey Turk! The most prominent enemies at this stage of the game are adorable jungle creatures. How threatening. Including monkeys and lemurs, who really shouldn't be there as a native only to Madagascar. Maybe they just wandered over from the last review, who knows. Juicy sweet! Juicy sweet! And there's also this thing. Hey! Not sure what it is exactly, but it's evidently not very nice. Indeed, pretty much every animal who nonchalantly brushes past Tarzan causes him tremendous pain for some reason. And what better solution than to pelt them all with fruit until they die? <laughs> Anybody else disturbed? But because it's Disney, of course, they don't burst into a gory bloodbath, but a cloud of butterflies. Because, you know, it's for kids! And they somehow managed to make beating monkeys to death child-friendly. Throughout the game, you may find different coloured fruits. You begin the game with a standard yellow gourd, but there's also a limited purple fruit that's more powerful. There's also a red fruit that splits off into pieces, allowing for more hits with just one throw. But the best of all is the blue fruit. Find one of these rarities and it'll eliminate everything on screen. These power-ups seem pretty cool initially, but the game is easy enough to completely bypass using them. You can also find your knife somewhere in the level, which you can use for close range attacks. Stabby stabby. Isn't it delightful? Ah, oh, Disney. Way to go for breeding a generation of little murderers. Honestly, the majority of enemies in this game don't do anything to hurt you. They just casually wander around, occasionally bumping into you, and somehow that warrants beating or stabbing them to death. Who's the real animal here? That said, there are some that throw things at you. I'm not entirely sure what these monkeys are flinging. It's some kind of indistinguishable brown blob. I I think it's fruit. Let's hope so. Banana bunches fill up your health meter, while the big orange mango-y things extend this meter, exactly like the action figures in the Hercules game. Your health meter is rather cleverly represented by this vine. I have nothing to say about it, I just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> Passing giant butterflies activates checkpoints, and I know what you're thinking! That butterfly looks familiar! You were thinking it, I know you were, don't deny it. Indeed, this butterfly also has a cameo in the subsequent Eurocom Disney game, Atlantis The Lost Empire. How about that?! So anyway, Turk talks you through the basics. If you collect all the letters spelling Tarzan, you earn the movie clip for that level. Even though, as with Atlantis, it's much more worth your while just buying the DVD. But hey, this was the late 90s after all, a time when a pixelated low-res 30-second clip of a movie was considered an apt reward for endless foraging. Disney sure knows how to disappoint. The most prolific collectible is these tokens. Collecting all of them in a level helps you attain 100% completion, and collecting 100 earns you an extra life. The final collectible is Jane's Baboon's sketch page pieces. <laughs> Finding all four pieces to complete the sketch unlocks a timed bonus level at the main level's conclusion. These are actually pretty cool, so we'll talk about these later. Finding Jane's parasol draws the level to a close, and should you want to save, we'll just pop and see Jane here. You're wonderful. You're not so bad yourself. It's now on to level two, which introduces some interesting new moves. Not only can you jump higher by using some surprisingly bouncy bird nests, but you can also ground pound the grassy knolls to open secret areas, avoiding the birds that rudely fly in your way. I actually love the noise Tarzan makes when he performs a ground pound. <laughs> I've seen similar tantrums working in retail. I'm sorry, ma'am. We're short staffed today. <laughs> This level also introduces vine swinging and uh, tree surfing. I love that there's no warning whatsoever here. You just land on another seemingly ordinary branch and suddenly... 
Oh my god, what's happening? Now, this is actually a real shame as this could actually be fun, but avoiding all the obstacles and attaining all the collectibles along the branch would be a lot more fun if the camera allowed you to see them. How was I meant to know those tokens were there? Seriously. If you know these levels by heart, it's not a problem, but for first time players, it's practically impossible to retrieve all the items along the way unless you're extremely lucky, because you don't see them. The only way to go back to the last checkpoint to retrieve the items you missed is by purposely getting this warthog to kill you. <laughs> Killed by a pig's ass. What a way to go! The third level is one of my favourites as it sees Tarzan in pursuance of an elephant hare. The atmosphere here is great, and while the music may sound a little computery, it nonetheless conveys a happy vibe. Hey, there's an elephant! Uh, hello? Uh, are you okay? Okay, see you then. It turns out the little elephant is surprisingly bouncy. Ah, uh, elephants! Nature's trampolines! I guess we're just gonna ignore this little guy then? Surely all we'd have to do is pluck one of his hairs and the level would be over, but nope! Onward men to bigger and better elephant hairs! One of the most irritating aspects of this level is uh, the birds! They just seem to get in the way and they can be so awkward to avoid. And by the way, just completely off topic, if you miss time a jump and fall into the abyss, Tarzan's scream is actually hilarious. <laughs> Seriously, what was that? It's possibly even a contender for the most comical death noise in a video game. Yeah. But it's nowhere near as good as- ah. In fact, speaking of deaths, the game over screens are pretty brutal for a kid's game. Ah. And it took me a few listens to realise that this was meant to be Kerchak. With skills like that, you'll never learn to be one of us. In fact, even now I'm still not sure, it just sounds like a bored middle-aged man. Anyway, in this level there's also a bouncy baby rhino later on, but you need to watch you don't touch his horn and his firm buttocks. As alluring as he may be. <laughs> Which is difficult considering his size. There's a pretty narrow margin for bounciness here. I love that this game assumes we know what animals can be bounced on. I've never jumped on a rhino before, and I seriously doubt that that would happen if I did. And then, again with no warning, this happens. <laughs> Swimming can be quite the annoyance. Quite. It's impossible to turn abruptly, which is pretty irritating when you need to double back on yourself to pick up tokens. Jesus H Christ, it's right fucking there! Just pick it up! Once you're done avoiding the crocs, the long search is over as you finish this particularly picturesque level beneath an elephant's butt. Well, that's just lovely. Naturally, the elephants are spooked and it provokes a stampede. This is one of my favourite chase levels ever. I love this level. It's so frenetic and fast-paced, although I can't help feeling it could all be over if you just step to one side. Yeah, but no, really, this could all be over pretty quickly if you think about it. Ah, a path. This'll keep me safe. Wh what? Why are you coming back, you moron? Blocking your path are many termite mounds, logs, panicky gorillas who are far more sense than you and retreat into hiding. Oh, and there are some more indistinguishable brown blob flinging monkeys. Yeah, I rather think the elephants alone are enough to have to avoid, guys. You didn't have to overdo it. The ending to this level makes zero sense, however. It just sort of ends. Like, he doesn't jump out of the way or anything, he just stops. Surely the elephants are still gonna crush him. <laughs> Anyway, after this, we're rewarded with a Phil Collins song. I'm sure everyone is thrilled. Well, I was. I love this soundtrack. I've got it right here. <laughs> Don't judge me. Then the next level sees you play as adult Tarzan, accompanied by a lower quality MIDI version of the song we just heard. Majestic. The difficulty increases a little at this stage. Not only have you grown, but also the animals, most notably the rhinos. Ooh, ruddy elf. They're fortunately just as bouncy, however. Whoa! This level also sees the return of tree surfing, whoop de doo which means more easily missable tokens. Jolly good. It also introduces new methods of sourcing fruits, as attacking these plants and ground pounding by banana trees causes all sorts of fruits to spill out. Much like Eurocom's Hercules game, the side scroll design of the levels allows for some hidden paths into the background. But unlike Hercules, they're less obvious. This branch, for example, sees you take an alternate path to find some hidden items. Once we've reached... Uh this tree, we move on to Sabor Attacks, which is honestly one of my favourite boss levels in a Disney game, mostly because of the atmosphere and brooding soundtrack. Luckily for you, you're not expected to rely on your fruit to defend yourself, but a spear, just like in the movie. With the spear, you can perform both high and low stabbing attacks, although there's so little distinction between the moves, it really makes me question why they bothered. Here's a low jab, and here's the high attack. See, it barely makes a difference. Sabor appears throughout the level in three intervals, while the rest of the level pans out like an ordinary level. 
harmful. In all honesty, Sabora is ironically the least harmful thing in this jungle. Her moves are fairly predictable, and you're far more likely to be brutally clawed to death by one of these birds. <laughs> the following level sees us help Jane escape the fearsome baboons, and I have to give credit to some people who've uploaded playthroughs of this game on YouTube, especially this person's channel, who manages to reach the clearing without a scratch. Seriously, it's unbelievably difficult to steer clear of all the obstacles and collect everything at the same time. Even at the best of times, I can't help but make Jane look clumsy as hell, practically destroying everything in her path and stepping on every animal. <laughs> For God's sake, woman, you're destroying more than the elephants did! Well done, Jane. You came here to study the wildlife and you've wound up wiping out half the jungle by stepping on them. Great job. Once you make it to the end of this dangerous path, Tarzan swoops in to save the day. <laughs> What follows is another tree surfing segment, which is actually surprisingly easy compared to the previous examples, despite the additional use of Jane's parasol to ward off the oncoming baboons. I love the noise she makes when she opens a parasol too. As if opening a parasol warrants such a dramatic grunt. Ha! It's raining. Next up we have trashing the camp, in which we take control of Turk. And it's surprisingly dull actually. You don't actually trash a fat lot, you spend most of the level avoiding your gorilla friends who are all mindlessly footling about. Footling is such a weird word, don't you think? Hey, hey! Get hit too much by them and you... Yow! Get thrown to the crocodiles, apparently. With friends like these, who needs enemies? Turk has all the same moves as Tarzan, only you have no means of attack. So it's sorta of kinda like Tarzan, but much blander. Like a budget Tarzan. Oh, but you can crawl. Wild. She doesn't even make a sound when she ground pounds. Thrilling stuff. We also receive some help from a surprisingly bouncy Tantor, who is incredibly shy for some reason. Every time you step in front of him, he seems to make a sharp U-turn. Please, I just wanna- <coughs> Oh, come on. <coughs> Oh, go away! Oh, be nice. No. We then move on to campsite commotion, which sees Tarzan meander through the camp, avoiding all the thugs to find Jane, the professor, and Clayton. The thugs don't seem to be doing much work, however. They're all walking in cycles, carrying boxes back and forth for no good reason other than to look busy and to get in your way. Much like a certain colleague of mine. You know, maybe this crate would budge if you were both pushing it in the same direction. Just a thought. The obstacles in this level are altogether rather odd. If you're at risk of dying just by bumping into people, it makes one wonder how you've survived in the jungle so long. Ironically, the camp seems to be a bigger death trap than the jungle. Jungle. Journey to the treehouse is the toughest level so far, and arguably the toughest of the side-scrolling levels. I seriously appreciate it for its hidden areas, it's genuinely tough to beat. Mistime one of these swings and the results can be fatal. It's difficult, yes, but the level design is admirable. However, I seriously do not appreciate this rope bridge. Ah! You traversed a whole jungle and you're flummoxed by a bridge? Are you serious? <laughs> It's so brittle! What is it made of? Cardboard? I also often find myself accumulating many fruits in this level that I never use. What was the point in having so many of these? The last batch of levels sees the format of the game alter somewhat. What started out as a basic side-scroller now turns into something rather different. The level Rock in the Boat sees you freely roam the boat in search of the exit, occasionally finding paths that return you to the familiar side-scrolling we're used to. This time you can fend off the thugs with fruit and even stab them with your knife. Let me take this moment to remind you all that this is a Disney game. Of course, as with the animals, the thugs defeated is signified by their bursting into butterflies. Can't get enough of that gritty realism. But unsurprisingly, the biggest threat in this level is the fucking birds again. Yeah, the thugs are practically harmless, but oh my god! Pigeons! Pigeons! The penultimate level is Tarzan to the rescue, which adopts a rather dark tone compared to previous levels. Not to mention the fact that the gameplay is completely different to any other level so far. Unlike the others, besides the chase levels, there's no side-scrolling aspect to this portion of the game at all. Instead, this is a fast-paced race to the finish line, freeing gorillas along the way. Also, the rhino in this level isn't bouncy, which is odd considering he's identical to all the others. <laughs> Indeed, the laws of this game universe seem to have changed somewhat. Are we playing the same game? Yeah. Oh my god, what's happening? <laughs> With absolutely no warning, you're expected to guide Tantor to the end of this course, avoiding overhead branches and grass-covered pits. <laughs> This part of the game genuinely terrified me as a kid. It's just so unexpected. There's also a chance to win an extra bonus life if you destroy all the cages and crates for some reason. Now the part that follows is actually pretty poorly executed in my opinion. There are two thugs blocking your path, but you can only defeat them in a certain order to progress. The problem is that they don't explicitly tell you this, so you can be hurling fruit at this guy for ages to no avail without a clue as to where you're going wrong. To make matters worse, the guy you're meant to attack first doesn't physically react to your attacks, so one would assume your attacks are ineffective anyway. It's pretty clumsy level design, not too much of a challenge, but annoying enough to be worth mentioning. Finally, we face Clayton, and yes, it's actually Brian Blessed! You won't escape from me twice! Gordon's alive! 
armed with knives and a rifle that can apparently shoot around corners, it seems he has the upper hand here. You know, considering you're armed with, uh, lemons. Seriously, Tarzan, you couldn't at least pick up a rock or something? Guess we'll just have to make do. I'ma squirt that lemon juice in your eyes, sunshine, and boy howdy is it gonna sting. Anyway, as with Sabor, Clayton doesn't actually pose the biggest threat here. Climbing the tree is far more of a challenge than you might expect, as all the animals seem to be against you. Damn you small furry animals, forever the bane of my existence. Well, let's face it, it's no fucking surprise after the way you've been treating them. <laughs> But if Clayton does happen to catch you and push you off the tree, he taunts you. You're playing in a man's world now. I just love the idea that he climbed all the way back down the tree again to laugh at your corpse. <laughs> I knew we could count on Brian Blessed for a solid evil laugh, but it still pales in comparison to... <laughs> the most annoying hazard is, again, the birds. <laughs> it's incredibly difficult to tell whether they're in the foreground or the background at times, much like the debris in the Hercules game, and it can so easily throw you off course. Once you reach the top, you simply have to avoid Clayton's attacks by jumping and crouching, and the moment he lets his guard down, throw fruit to push him off the tree to his death. <laughs> Yeah, it's fortunate for you that he's too stupid to step forwards just a few inches. Yeah, Disney boss is lacking a few brain cells. What's new? So anyway, once you've completed the game, you're rewarded with a movie clip. Yippee yowza and yoohoo to you! Sort of like Hercules, what clip you get depends on your difficulty setting, and if you complete the hardest setting, you get another Phil Collins song. If you hate Phil Collins, this game's a form of torture. When will it end? Now let's talk about those bonus levels. Each standard level besides the final boss has its own hidden bonus level, unlocked by finding the sketch pages. And these genuinely impress me, not only because they're genuinely fun to play for the most part, but a fair few of them are also derived from scenes in the movie. Each bonus level requires you to make it as far as you can into the level against the time limit. Collecting these purple fruits boosts your time. One of my personal favourites is Turk and Tandor's Great Escape, which sees you having to outrun Kerchak, but it loses points for apparently being impossible to complete. I've talked about this before in an old video. Go on, watch it. You know you want to. Watch it. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Go on. I've noted some players on YouTube have been able to finish it. However, in all copies of the game I've played here in the UK, Tantor simply does not run fast enough. I'm not certain if this is just PAL releases or if I'm just being really stupid and missing something. But honestly, I weirdly can't win this level. Besides this minor complaint, the bonus levels are interesting and somewhat challenging too. <laughs> okay, so this game bears some noticeable similarities to Hercules, but it's a vast improvement on the former. Most of the controls are pretty slick, although sometimes Tarzan can jerk and hesitate when you try and turn him around abruptly. The tree serving needs some work, as I said before, as finding the collectibles in one go without having to backtrack is practically impossible. I like the variety in this game. Sure, Turk could be a little more interesting to control, but it's refreshing to control the other characters besides Tarzan himself. Ultimately, Disney's Tarzan is one of the PS1's best movie tie-in games in my opinion. It's a little on the short side, but as far as movie games go, this is pretty solid. And I'm not monkeying around. Ah! Welcome to the jungle. We got fun and games. We got everything you want. How do we know the names we all done? <laughs> Bitches!